Good morning to all. Today's topic is on gingival surgical procedures. Coming to the learning outcomes, name five gingival surgical procedures. Explain the objectives, indications, contraindications, complications, and healing after surgery for gingival procedures. Apply the knowledge of gingival surgical techniques in clinical practice. Compare all the surgical techniques pertaining to gingival tissues. Introduction. Especially, we will be dealing with the periodontal surgery that is related to gingival tissues and without involving underlying osseous structures. Mainly, it has been classified into gingival curettage and gingivectomy. So, we will be describing mainly on gingivectomy and a little bit of curettage and also we will be including apically displaced flap. Uh, in the aspect of this can be used as uh, as a surgical technique to increasing the attached gingiva and the current understanding of the disease etiology and therapy limits the use of both these techniques but their place in the surgical therapy is essential so coming to the uh, surgical procedure the first one that is curettage and it's been taken out from the period literature as it was used before but for the theoretical aspect, so we are going to the details of curettage. What does word curettage mean? That is, it is a scraping of the gingival wall of a periodontal pocket to separate diseased soft tissue. So, it is nothing much that is the scraping of gingival wall of the periodontal pocket to separate diseased soft tissue. So this can be of different types that is gingival curettage that is what we told before that is the removal of the inflamed soft tissue lateral to the pocket wall and what is the subgingival curettage so when it is performed apical to the epithelial attachment you can see that you see this is the epithelial attachment if it is going beyond the uh, epithelial attachment severing the conti tissue attachment uh, to the osseous crest that is called a subgingival curettage okay then what is it an inadvertent curettage that is some degree of curettage can be done unintentionally during the scaling and root planing so this will be done uh, during swelling and root planing so that curettage is called as inadvertent curettage what is the rationale of curettage so then we know that it will be removing the gingival wall of pocket so that is it is removal of chronically inflamed granulation tissue that forms the lateral wall of periodontal pocket that is a ration, mean rationally and the purpose of curettage is valid particularly when it is when attempt is made especially in case of supra bony pockets obviously for infra bony pockets there will be a limitation for the accessibility so that is why it's more used in supra bony pockets so this is the rationally so coming to the aims of curettage there is first one that is to reduce periodontal pocket by enhancing gingival shrinkage. So some amount of reduction can be found by curettage method. So that is the first aim. And the second one that is to restore gingiva to normal health with respect to color, contour, consistency and surface texture. That is by healing. So this can lead to normal health of gingiva that is by the formation of long junctional epithelium or repair so that is the second one and to obviously to eliminate the inflammation in very deep pockets before doing any surgery so if it is in deep pockets so, so to some amount to some extent it can reduce the inflammation or as a preparatory stage before the flap surgery okay so that is the third point and last one is that is to reduce loss of attachment by developing new connective tissue attachment that is to arrest the disease so that it can reduce the loss of attachment by the new connective tissue attachment. Coming to the indications, what are the indications? There is, as we told before, this can be used in supra bony pockets. That is to eliminate shallow supra bony pockets located in accessible areas as a part of new attachment attempt in moderately deep infra bony pockets. That is, as a closed surgery, it can be used or as a non uh, like uh, as a non definitive procedure prior to flap surgery that is to reduce inflammation okay so this in deep pockets this can be used as an arresting factor or as a to reduce the inflammation or as a preparatory stage by or prior to flap surgery okay and then third point is that in patients who need more advanced surgical techniques 
but are contraindicated due to age. So as a maintenance procedure, so those who are uh, like contraindicated the procedure, so this can be done as a maintenance phase. And then in case of, that is in maintenance phase for areas of recurrent inflammation. So if there is areas of recurrent inflammation and pocket depth, you can go for a cure attach. Okay. So these are the indications to eliminate shallow bony as a part of new attachment attempt it can be used or as a preparatory stage to flap surgery and in patients who need more advanced surgical techniques but are contraindicated due to some reasons and in on case of maintenance phase. Coming to contraindications. So in which all cases it has been contraindicated as you know if the pockets are very tortuous there is a complex there is a small more of spiral type of pockets. So where the opening of pocket will be narrow and the base will be broad. You, you know that there is a limited accessibility to these type of pockets. So this is contraindicated and also in cases of molars are if the molars are tilted that also it makes this a complex inaccessible areas. Okay, so this is contraindicated. There is a first point and second point is that soft tissue wall is fibrotic and in hyperplasia. For example, in case of drug induced gingival enlargement, so in case of idiopathic uh, gingival fibromatosis, you can see that there is a increased fibrotic content. So we cannot expect a reduction in the uh, gingival enlargement due to cure attach. Okay, so this is a uh, this is this is also one of the factor that is a fibrotic content cannot be removed by the uh, by this uh, cure attack. So definitely it has to go for gingivectomy. Okay, so that is contraindicated there and also in case of furcation involvement. In case of furcation involvement, cure attack alone will not uh, will not. Uh, uh, lead to a success because what is gingival uh, cure attach it is a scraping of gingival uh, gingival wall so it won't help in uh, re re reducing or accessing the areas of furcation involvement as you know that furcation involvement if it is involved you have to access get access to the furcation area either for regeneration or for maintaining the oral hygiene so you have to get access to the furcation area by the removal not only really by like this uh, even though it is removing the reducing the pocket it won't help to uh, help to solve the vocation involvement okay so that is the third point and the last point there is this case of blood dysgraphia diabetes or any other debilitating disease that is uh, that is contraindicated for all the surgical procedures so that is contraindicated and also the drug history that is patient on corticosteroid or allergy to LA this has been contraindicated okay coming to the procedure so coming to the details of procedure as you know that for gingival curator local anesthesia is needed and this curate is selected so this appropriate LAC curate can be selected according to the area specificity and that outer cutting edge will be acting against the tissue. The pocket wall may be supported by the gentle finger pressure and the scooping motion of this curate. You can see that this is the curate placed against the gingival wall. The scooping motion of the curate will remove the inner lining of the pocket wall. Then the area is flush to remove debris and then this tissue can be adapted back with the gentle pressure. Or Sometimes if it is needed you can go for the suturing or with the periodontal pack can be given. So you can, it is very clear with this diagrammatic representation of this removal of pocket lining and removal of genital epithelium and granulation tissue and you can see that this procedure has been completed and you can use the digital pressure to compress this wall to the tooth surface. So this can be uh, initiated by the formation of clot, the attachment can be initiated by the formation of clot or if it is uh, not approximating then you can go for the suture placement. So after all these uh, discussion, there is aims, indications and advantages. So it's still it is questionable. Why it is questionable? So this AAP, uh, they, have, uh, they have come forward with the conclusion that it has been removed. Why it has been removed from the period literature? That is the actual result obtained with curatage is most often a long genital epithelium. So which is the same result obtained with the scaling and root planing. 
Short and long term clinical trials have found that gingival curatage provides no additional benefit when it is compared to scaling and root planing alone in terms of probing pocket reduction, attachment gain, or inflammatory reduction. So, dental community as a whole regards gingival curatage as a procedure with no clinical value. So that is what they are telling that after scaling and routining itself, the major source of bacteria is getting disappeared. And also during root planing, the some amount of pocket pathological changes also happens. That is all pathological changes will get resolved. There is, there is no need of any additional cure attach. The scaling and root planing alone will lead to the gingival cure attach. They, the, this root planing procedure is alone doing the planing of root surface as well as the gingival scraping of pocket wall. So that this existing granulation tissues will get slowly resolved and the bacteria present are destroyed by the defensive mechanism of the pores. So that is why this cure attach, the resolution procedure has been taken out. Uh, taken out from the prayer literature. So now the new concept is that only the scaling and root planing and also now into more into root debridement also. Okay, root debridement is what that is uh, they are limiting the uh, removal, the amount of removal of cementum. So they are only concentrating on the removal of plaque and calculus on the root surface and uh, uh, avoiding the indential removal of cementum. Okay, what are the other techniques uh, under cure attach? We have excisional new attachment procedure, ultrasonic cure attach, chemical cure attach, cure attach using laser fiber. So coming to the uh, brief description on these each techniques, that is the first one that is excisional new attachment procedure. As you, that is the as the name indicates, what is excisional new attachment procedure? There is the definitely subgingival cure attach performed with a knife. There is excision of the tissue. So that is will be done with a knife. So this obviously this will be done with the subgingival cure attach with a knife developed to accomplish proper tissue preparation. You can see that this is a pocket lining. So this can be done with curet and this NAP is telling that this can be done with the internal bevel incision is made from the margin of free ginger vapically to a point below the bottom of the pocket. So then the remo removal of this excised tissue with a curet. Okay. And then we are root planing the root surfaces with all exposed cementum and then approximating the wound edges. This, this edges can be approximated. And then sometimes if it is needed you can go for suture placement and periodontal dressing. So this gain better access to root surface by the removal of this main advantage is that which gives better access to the root surface for doing root planing. Okay. So that, that is excisional new attachment procedure. So coming to the ultrasonic cure attach that is this cure attach has been done using ultrasonic devices. So this as you know that ultrasonic devices will produce vibrations. So this will disrupt tissue continuity and lift off the epithelium. So this always results in a narrow band of necrotic tissue and which decreases the inflammation. So these instruments are not as effective as hand instruments in removing cutting tissue and leaving a smooth pocket wall. So coming to the chemical cure attach, as you know, this is uh, by the use of certain drugs, that is a caustic drugs like sodium sulfide, alkaline sodium hypochlorite, phenol. So these were discovered after studies showed their ineffectiveness or you can more uh, in detail you can explain is that the extent of tissue destruction cannot be controlled. The extent cannot be managed. So that is why it has been outdated. Okay. So coming to the cure attach using laser fiber, that is this can be done using laser fiber. That is the laser fiber tip can be inserted into the pocket and can be kept parallel to the tooth. It is usually painless procedure as it's that is why that is laser is used. So it moved epically until pocket base is reached. So if it reaches the pocket base, you can see clear with this diagrammatic representation, you can see that this is a pocket wall. So after removing all the plaque and calculus, scaling, 
and or you can use this uh, laser fiber tip to insert into the pocket pocket tip so what happens there will be vaporizing of pocket epithelium subgingival plaque and also some amount of granulation tissue so this will lead to the healing of this gingival uh, epithelium and you can see that the result of long junctional epithelium okay so that is a curettage using laser fiber Coming to the healing after curettage, as you know, that is, the healing is mainly achieved by the formation of long junctional epithelium and is always an uneventful healing can be expected. So that is immediately after curettage, a blood clot fills the upper pocket area, and this will be followed by a rapid proliferation of granulation tissue with a decrease in the number of blood vessels as the tissue matures. And this is followed by the restoration and epitherization of the cells, which generally requires 2 to 7 days. So what do you can expect clinically? Clinically, immediately after cure attached, the gingiva appears hemorrhagic and bright red. And after one week, this will be slightly redder than normal with apical shift in the position of marginal gingiva. So after two weeks, you can uh, see that with the normal color, condor consistency, surface texture and uh, the well-adapted gingival margin. So coming to the next important procedure that is the gingivectin. So Lysilamon Romishik introduced this gingivectomy. So what is gingivectomy? It is excision of soft tissue wall of the pocket. Okay, and it is a procedure for the eradication of the pocket that is mainly uh, attains pocket elimination that is by removing the disease pocket wall so it is a surgical procedure designed to resect the gingival pocket as such it will be removing the whole pocket in such a manner that the remaining gingiva will heal to provide health function and aesthetics the gingivectomy technique may be performed by means of scalpels electrodes lasers or chemicals so it is the most reliable and predictable method of pocket so coming to the objectives, as you know, the first objective is to eliminate the pocket, obviously to eliminate the pocket and also to achieve normal architecture of gingiva. So by eliminating the pocket, they can achieve normal architecture of gingiva and also to provide visibility and accessibility. There is pseudo pocket. So this uh, footables, calculus will be covered by the this pseudo pocket. So by the elimination of this pocket, this get access to the root surface for proper scaling and root planing. What are the advantages? Provides visibility and accessibility for calculus removal and smoothing of roots. Technically, it is simple and which gives good visual access. Complete pocket elimination, predictable morphologic result. Disadvantages are it creates a gross wound, so post-operative pain can be expected. Healing is by secondary intention, so there is a danger of exposing dope bond. Sacrifice of attached gingiva, so by the removal excision of gingiva, it will be reducing the attached gingiva. Exposes cervical area of tooth, which can lead to sensitivity. Aesthetically, it can be compromised, and also it can lead to caries and also uh, phonetic and aesthetic problems in anterior areas. Coming to the indications and contraindications. So what are the indications for gingivectomy? As you know, the main indication is for the elimination of gingival enlargement. Supra bony pockets in area. So it can, it can be used to treat supra bony pockets in areas with limited access. Elimination of supraboni periodontal abscesses can be corrected with this and also minor corrective procedures even for crown lengthening and for aesthetic purposes also. Then what are the contraindications? As you know this will be decreasing the attached gingiva. So if there is narrow zone of attached gingiva it is contraindicated. If there is infra bony pockets it is contraindicated. So if it is done in infra bony pocket this will lead to bony exposure. And if there is thickened marginal alveolar bone, so that will also lead to the bone exposure and the improper gingival discrepancy. 
and it will lead to hysteric concerations particularly in anterior maxilla so if there is aesthetic more concerned uh, then it is contraindicated so coming to the instruments used for gingivectomy as you know the probe mirror tweezer the important one is that the cream kaplan's pocket marker you can see in this diagram we have two two sides there is a mesial side and distal side both sides of cream kaplan's marker this is more clear with this diagram okay and we have gingivectomy knives there is kirkland knife and orban knives so this is the kirkland knife this is organ knife and we have curettes we should have curettes tissue scissors and tissue nippers so this is the most important gingivectomy knives that is the pithy shaped uh, kirkland knife and the orban's knife so this is the details of kirkland knife that is a flat knife it has cutting edge that extends uh, around the entire blade so in their cutting edge must be sharpened Whereas this orban knives, you can see that two cutting edges of an interproximal knife that is formed by the bevels on the front and back surfaces of the blade. So this is the orban's knife. So coming to the surgical techniques of gingivectomy, this is very important. So we will be describing it in uh, each step. So the first one that is the marking the pockets. As we told, we have pocket marker for gingivectomy. So this uh, pockets will be uh, explored with the periodontal probe. First, we will be measuring this with the periodontal probe, and then we will use the pocket marker to mark it. That is, instrument will be held with the marking end, with this, will, it will be with the vertical axis of the tooth, and the straight end inserted to the base of the pocket, and the other end will be going outside the gingival wall. So this will be marked by pressing the pliers together by producing. So this will be pressed against the gingival surface. So this will make a bleeding point. Okay. You can see that this is the bleeding point is being created with the pocket marker. So the pockets are marked. That is that will be uh, beginning on the distal surface. This will be marked from the distal surface of last tooth and then it will be moved anteriorly. Okay, you can see that this is the diagrammatic representation. The flat surface will be going inside and the marker point will be going outside. Okay, so this is the marking pocket marker in position and the beveled incision has been given. So this is the beveled. Uh, incision extends apical to the perforation made by the uh, pocket marker okay so you can see with the picture that this is the gingival enlargement pseudo pocket so we will be marking it and then uh, then this incision will be given at this point okay apical to the bleeding points so coming to the step two that is the resecting the gingiva so after creating the bleeding points you have to resect the gingiva so this can be done either with a nice uh, scalpel or with the uh, scissors or electro surgery so the periodontal knives you can see that kirkland knives has been used for um, facial and lingual surfaces so this will be uh, done starting from the distal to the distal to terminal tooth in arch and orban's knife will be given for the interdental incision okay and also for the scalpel one we are mainly we will be using 12 or 15 and so scissors are also used as auxiliary instrument so this diagram shows that see this is the incision being given by the kirkland knife and this with orban knife uh, giving the uh, interdental incision so this will be in a bubbled incisions beveled incision there is b45 degree angulation to the gingival surface so coming to the making the incisions so the making the incisions is very important that is as we told before there is the external bevel incision will be given there is incision so this angle will be 45 degree okay so this uh, there is the angle between the gingival surface so there is it can be this incisions can be either interrupted or continuous so there is incision should be as close as bone as possible without exposing the bone so the whole pocket depth will be removed by this uh, external bevel incision 
so this will be as close to bone without exposing the bone that is you know that incision is beveled 45 degree that is to the gingival surface to recreate the normal festooned pattern and same procedure will be done for the palatal surface also so the, for the better contour and to avoid vessels and nerves of incisive canal the incision should be carried along the sides of incisive fibra and not horizontally across it so for preserving the blood vessels it, can, it has to go along the sides of incisive fibra and not horizontally okay So as we told before, this uh, external bevel incisions can be uh, continuous or discontinuous or interrupted. So how it is why, or why it is given like this? That is, it uh, started on the facial surface of last tooth carried forward without interruption. This is the continuous inc incision. So this will be following the course of the pocket. That is continuous incision. And this is the interrupted incision. So this also will be uh, started on facial surface at distal angle of last tooth and carried forward following the course of uh, pocket and extending through the interdental gingiva to distofacial angle. You can see that this will be in, at this point. So again it is starting from this point to this and then again it is starting from this point to this. Okay, so this will be ending at a distofacial angle. So next uh, the incision begins in the middle space to distofacial angle of next tooth okay so that is the uh, continuous incision or discontinuous incision so always this scallop incision is advantages in preserving the interdental architecture in gingivectomy and also in creating surgical papilla and preserving soft tissue over the interdental areas to allow coverage of the interdental bone in flap surgery so coming to the removal, so we have given incision and then we have to remove the pocket wall. So the removal of this excised uh, pocket wall and then we have to irrigate and clean the area and examine the root surface. You can see that this is the area that has been exposed. So the most apical zone consists of a band like light zone where the tissues were attached and coronally to it some uh, Calculus remnants, root caries or root reception may be found and granulation tissue may be seen on the XI soft tissue. Okay. So you can see it is clear with this diagram that it after the removal, this, this has been exposed. So we can expect there is granulation tissue. You can see that this is the granulation tissue found and this is the calculus and other root deposits and this is the clear space where the initial epithelium was attached okay so this is the the surgical area and this is the tissue has been removed so after the removal there is a scale and plane the root surface so you can see that the great access to the tooth surface for scaling so this has been removed with the curette and all and then after irrigation, after the removal of all uh, tissues and all, then this cover with the cover with the surgical dressing. Okay, so this is the post-operative picture. Okay, this is the procedure. So coming from the start the starting point, just to memorize all these steps. The first one that is the planned area. Okay, next is the marking the pockets with the Pocket marker, Crane Kaplan's pocket marker is being used for marking the pocket. Okay, this has been marked and after that a beveled incision is being created with the Kirkland knife and the Orban's knives apical to this pocket marking. You can see that this is the beveled incision given 45 degree angulation to the tooth surface and this Orban's knife is being used for the interdental incision. Then tissue forceps uh, have been used for the removal of this tissue. You can see that this is the tissue removed. And then there is, there is more access to the tooth surface for cleaning. So scaling and root cleaning has been done. And then this is the clinical view immediately after the removal. And this is the post-operative stage. So there are various techniques of gingivectomy. 
this that is uh, we already told that this gingivectomy can be done with the scalpel or with the electropowdery or with the lasers or with chemicals so the most important one that is the laser gingivectomy so we already mentioned about the scalpel gingivectomy so now coming to the laser gingivectomy you know that currently this is the most common procedure performed so and all laser wavelengths can be used to precisely incise the gum for aesthetic cosmetic and periodontal purposes the surgical lasers that is area carbon dioxide ndac diodes these are the main lasers that can be used to perform the fine gingival or mucosal surgery so which are perfectly controlled without post pain and which heal within a few days so only erbium lasers will be indicated for procedures on both bone and gingiva so they are particularly effective for aesthetic clinical crown lengthening in a very critical area without the need for a flap so what are the advantages of laser gingivectomy it is a completely dry bloodless surgery can be expected surgical time obviously it will be reduced with no bleeding and no pain and instant sterilization of the area is possible so in that case decreasing the chances of bacteremia and minimal post operative pain swelling and scarring disadvantage is that protective eyewear should be used uh, for all three of that is operators assistant and the patient should wear protective goggles and all obviously there is a high cost for the equipment so you can see that this is the untreated uh, periodontal this is gum enlargement this is being done with the laser so this is the fiber tip this will be activated with the pulse mode or continuous mode and uh, this has been done with the uh, for laser gingivectomy this will be done in 8 10 nm and this will be activated with the foot pedal and we can remove the so this incision will be given like this with the pocket marker can be used and you can give the incision with the laser so this is the picture showing a uh, laser gingivectomy and you can uh, search in youtube you can see the video uh, demonstrating the laser gingivectomy so then coming to the other procedure there is other techniques for gingivectomy that is by chemo surgery obviously this procedure is not recommended as you know that is the action cannot be controlled so severe chemicals have been advocated instead of this so that is the one of the main important component is the 5 formaldehyde okay and uh, another method is that the potassium hydroxide so disadvantage is that the depth of action cannot be controlled gingival remodeling cannot be done with this and epithelial reformation of gingival epithelium is slower in case of chemically treated wounds so the uh, next technique is the by the ultracautery as you know that advantages there is permits adequate contouring of tissue better control of hemorrhage but the disadvantages are that is cannot be used in patients with non-compatible or poorly shielded pacemaker and it poses an unpleasant order if it touches bone irre irreparable damage can occur and heat generated can cause tissue damage if it is not used properly and if electron touches cementum it can cause cementum burn so this is the electrocautery uh, unit and these are the tips there are different tips are available for incision excision and all so loop and all it's available for electrocautery so healing after gingivectomy so the, for the second day you can see the clot formation and by fourth day you can expect this uh, clot formation will be replaced by granulation tissue and epithelium without a tapex will get extended over a part of the surface with dense inflammatory infiltration and by the sixth day you can see that this covered will be this wound will be covered by stratified squamous epithelium and there will be like slight formation of collagen in the connective tissue so again the, by the 16th day you can see the epithelium with red apex appear and also dense collagenous connective tissue also appears then this well developed by 21st day you can see the well developed epithelial red apex with the thickening of stratum corneum 
with increased collagen formation in the conti tissue and then gingiva will clinically appear now. So these are the desired results after gingivectomy what we are expecting clinically. There is a thin gingival margin, beveled and adapted tightly to the tooth, pyramidal shaped into the gingiva, confluent with gingival margin of adjacent tooth and this indented gingiva should slope approximately 45 degree and have a linear indentation to form a loose vase or close or pikely. and the remaining zone of att attached gingiva should be adequate and keratinized. Coming to the uh, next part that is uh, gingivoplasty. So what is gingivoplasty? It's just the it makes a difference from gingivectomy that is this is only recondoring of gingiva especially in case of absence of pockets so gingivectomy is done to eliminate pockets whereas gingivoplasty is done with the sole purpose of recondoring okay so just shaping the gingiva so it can be accomplished with the either with the periodontal knife or with a scalpel or with the rotary course diamond stones and it creates a sluice ways for passage of food so how we can do the procedure that is tapering the gingival margin, creating scalloped marginal outline, thinning of attached gingiva, creating vertical indental grooves and shaping the indental papilla. So this is the procedure for gingivoplasty. So decision tree for treatment of drug induced gingival enlargement. So this is just the decision tree that is uh, we have already described in case, in uh, gingival enlargement. So this is a just decision tree as we are discussing all these gingivectomy and gingivoplasty. Uh, we just included just to make you know that is in case of reevaluation, which procedure will be done. Okay, why it is uh, periodontal flap has been done and why it is not done. Okay. So coming to epically displaced fab, as we told before, we have included this epically displaced fab also. So it doesn't mean that uh, this epically displaced fab will be done without osseous uh, condoring. This can be done with osseous condoring or without osseous condoring. Okay. So here we are taking that is the technique that is used to widen the sort of attaching java and for pocket eradication. Okay. So this uh, can be done, so depending on the purpose, it can be either be full thickness uh, or split thickness flap. So always this uh, split thickness flap is always being used for increasing the attached gingiva. So it requires, but this split thickness flap requires more precision and time as well as the gingiva uh, tissue uh, thick enough to split. So it should be very thick enough to split. And also it can be more accurately positioned and sutured in an apical position using a periosteal suturing technique. Okay. So this is a diagrammatic representation. Okay. So this is the case. You can see that this um, uh, initial reverse bevel incision uh, is followed. That is a reverse bevel incision. There is opposite to external bevel incision. That is what you are giving for a gingivectomy. Okay. So this will be followed by the thinning of the enlarged gingival tissue. There is a dotted line, so you can see that represent the incisions, and the shaded area. So this shaded area uh, represents the tissue portion to be excised. Okay. So after flap elevation, a large portion of the gingival tissue is removed. So then the flap is placed back on top of the alveolar bone and then sutured. Okay. So that is what the uh, apically displaced flap. So in this case, it will be thinning of gingiva will be done and also the pocket lining will be removed and this will be attached back to the sir, to cover the alveolar bone. Okay. So this will be very clear with this uh, diagrammatic representation. You can see that if it is if it wants to get extended or if it wants to get uh, placed little apically, you need to give vertical incisions for the movement of the flap. So you can see that vertical incision has been given and you can see that it is a reverse bevel incision. See, this is the internal bevel incision that is 45 degree to the tooth surfaces. Okay. And the flap elevation has been done till the mucosa. Okay. And the removal of 
inflamed gingival collar has been done with the curette. So this is the tissue that will be removed. And after removal, you can do either uh, remo like contouring of bone and removal of bone, and you can make it down for accessibility to the root surface. To the root surface. So if any bony deformity is there, this can be done. Shaping can be done, and then flap pikery position and sutured. Okay. So in this case, this will be increasing the. If it is a pikery place, this will be increasing the attaching. Okay. So conclusion, there is a recurrence of chronic inflammatory enlargement immediately after treatment indicates that all irritants have not been removed. Contributory local conditions such as food impaction and overhanging restorations are often overlooked. So if the enlargement recurs after healing is complete and normal contour is attained, inadequate plaque removal controlled by the patient is the most common cause. So removal of local irritant stands as a prime factor to avoid recurrence of pockets and enlargement okay so that's all about surgical techniques thank you